Welcome back, and it's 25 minutes away from 2 o'clock. Well, as we were discussing earlier, employment has always uh, been top of the pops, hasn't it, when it comes to a healthy economy? In the, the last hour, we've been talking about that recent survey which found that uh, a lot of uh, younger job seekers are actually choosing big bucks as opposed to a job they are really, really satisfied with, and it's having uh, so all sorts of knock-on effects. The jobs market has changed dramatically in recent years, hasn't it? Manufacturing is no longer the backbone of uh, South Australia. Instead, new technology is the new future. But the good news is uh, the work is caught in the middle of that transaction or that transition towards uh, the new way of uh, finding a job and the f- new jobs that are out there. It might be a little bit daunting, but uh, to keep up and to try to help, uh, there's a new... Um, initiative about to be launched this week and it's called JobX. It's South Australia's largest career exhibition and it's highlighting the jobs uh, that are already available and those are that are about to come in the emerging industries. Uh, to talk uh, about it and tell us all about it, it's a uh, very good afternoon to, jo- to Scott Oster who's uh, JobX's program director. All your idea? Uh, no. <laughs> Thanks for having us on today, Alan. <laughs> um, Great initiative. What? Uh, how does it going to work? It's going to be a travelling travelling exhibition. That's right. So um, what we're delivering is three events in uh, the next few weeks. Uh, the biggest and first event will be JobX Adelaide uh, on Friday and Saturday this week, and then we'll move to uh, to Port Augusta on the twentieth of November and Murray Bridge on the twenty third. And it's aimed at uh, not just kids at school. Obviously, it's, it's, it's aimed to any anyone. Yeah, the we've designed the event to be very um, broad in its focus. In that, um, we'd love to be able to provide uh, students of today um, selecting uh, subjects in the next couple of years uh, with some ideas about what the emerging jobs are going to be in mm. the, in the midterm. Uh, but also, we look to we are hoping to deliver on uh, what vacancies are, are around today, and we have a list of around two thousand jobs that are available today in South Australia. So there are two thousand. 000- new jobs sitting there ready for the taking. That's right. And um, so a number of those are, are with the companies that will be at JobX. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, but we have a, a raft of recruitment specialists there that can help uh, people who are looking at careers that are not necessarily in the five focus sectors that will be, dis- um, that will have, be demonstrating at JobX. How, do you know how long those jobs have been vacant? I mean, is it a case of jobs are going begging? Because sometimes we do hear about that, don't we? How can unemployment be so high when there are so many vacancies? Well, it's probably a little bit out of my, uh, uh, my area, but... We've been tracking jobs um, over the last few months. There were a number of um, new jobs, um, I guess, initiatives announced Mm. in the most recent state budget. Uh, So since that time, there's been... I believe at least 2,000 jobs that, have been, that we've been tracking uh, through the SA Jobs Today website. So um, as part of JobX, we will be having a recruitment zone uh, and you can search those those live jobs there at the event. Hmm. So how do we go about actually identifying where the the growth is going to be in the future? That must be very... That's crystal ball stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What, so what we've done in the, in the design of this event is we've looked at uh, what are the major projects that are happening in the state that we know are coming. So things like the Future Submarines project, mm. uh, which uh, uh, which we know is coming, and there will be thousands of jobs associated with that. Um, we're talking about things like the, the Solar Array project, the Aurora project by Solar Reserve in Port Augusta. Again, that's a, the, the largest of its kind in the world in terms of projects. Um, recent announcements by Oz Minerals, uh, to open a new mine. So I guess the way that we've designed this event is to focus on those sectors where we know that green shoots are coming in the economy and there, there is job growth. Mm, mm. And uh, even if, if uh, the people who go along don't necessarily take or, or, or apply for those jobs right now, mm-hmm. they can get an idea of what subjects they should be choosing, particularly if they're students, for example, yeah, absolutely. in I the think- next few years. Watching the registrations roll in, roll on in, and I think um, as of this morning there were a little over eight thousand um, across the three events. Oh, okay. So that's been fantastic. Um, but it's really pleasing to see that families are choosing to come. Uh, so we're seeing mum and dad and their children uh, registering to come along to the event. So as a family, they can have these discussions and take. Um, go home and think about and talk about um, what these career choices might be moving into the sort of the mid and near term. We were talking uh, in the last hour, this new survey by the uh, Apprenticeship Support uh, Australia, that organisation, they've done a survey of about 13,000 young Australians and they found that uh, the influence that parents 
can have on younger people's mm. uh, decisions is as strong as it ever been. So it's it's heartening, isn't it, to hear that uh, the, the parent the parents are going along. And I guess the um, another important thing to point out about the event is the seminar program that will be offered in conjunction with it. So I think that we have got um, around twenty seminars and keynote sessions that will we'll be running alongside the expo itself, and over eighty speakers uh, associated with that. And uh, just before we came on air today, we we're actually having a discussion about the kind of transferable skills. Um, that people will have and the, the types of different careers that, that people now have throughout their lifetimes. So I think um, a really important part of the expo will be about getting along, talking to those industry professionals about mm. employers and finding out not necessarily what jobs are available today or in the near term, but the kind of skills that these employers can offer people to help them transition across various jobs throughout their career. Mm, mm, absolutely. Uh, also with us is uh, Anna Hodge. Now, Hodge, uh, you're with uh, Rising, Sun, Rising Sun Pictures, a, 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 a real uh, local success story. Yes. Tell us about Rising Sun for those who don't know. Well, Rising Sun Pictures is sort of oh, probably about five minutes walk across the road there on Pulteney Street, and we do visual effects for um, pretty big movies, and one mm. of them that you recently would have heard of is Thor Ragnarok and, and before that Logan. Um, we've employed approximately 170 people. Uh, growth has been quite big in the last few years and um, we have our own education program run with the University of South Australia so we're actually increasing our workforce at the moment and we had six new starters today and uh, we're always looking for, for good new talent but with our education program we've, we've got the benefit of actually working with an institute that um, we can then develop programs to make our students employable, not just locally, but also globally. So you do a lot of the special effects for these big yes, blockbusters, so don't things, you? Yes, so things where, you know, the explosions, the, mm. the, the mythical creatures, those sorts of things that you see if we're sort of talking about visual effects. But um, with, with Rising Sun Pictures, obviously photorealism is really important. So making the unreal look real, and also a lot of it is sort of seamless visual effects where there's things that you might see that uh, you think might be 100 people walking down the street or they might actually be digi-doubles created on a computer. So... Mm. Um, um, yeah, things and like that. It's all being done on the computer over here in Pulteney Street. Well, yeah. Actually, it's <laughs> yeah, amazing, isn't it? It is. Well, I mean, you, you talk to people, and a lot of my, my role is actually going out to speak to school students, um, you know, secondary school students and tertiary students as well, and they often say, well, where are you? Um, which city? I'm like, well, Adelaide. Mm. Uh, really? Yeah. That happens in Adelaide. So uh, people don't believe that it does happen in Adelaide, but it does. We've got a, a great workforce. Um, we've got a workforce that is, you know, um, of a global standard, and uh, we're training them up to be globally ready for employment. But, of course, you know, we, we train them up because we want to employ them. How many did you say you've got on staff now? We've got about 170 looking wow. to grow to about 190. So, I remember yeah, when you started. I don't remember when, yeah. when the company started. You know, three 20, people, I think. I think 22, you know? 23 years yeah. ago, yes, yeah. uh, at the Rising Sun Hotel uh, at Kensington. And, um, yeah, so if you look at our, our frontage on Pulteney Street, it's not very big, but what goes on beh mm. behind those doors, mm. um, there's a lot of people in there doing some pretty amazing stuff. Okay. So you're a great success story and, uh, and a great uh, demonstration of what uh, future employment might look like. Mm. Is that why you're involved with uh, JobEx? Yeah, well, um, we're involved with JobEx because uh, we are... We, we take on people from uh, all sorts of walks of life and as Scott was talking about, we um, we work with the university so we're training up students that are coming out of university, we're providing pathways for students wanting to get into visual effects. Uh, we're also, we, we take on, we've had students come through that are career changes or mm. people that have been possibly in a related industry like a media or film industry and they're wanting to upskill so learn new skills so that they can be competitive, so that they can remain employable, and that's what it's all about uh, when you're working uh, with technology. So um, um, it, it really is about sort of catering to those different people. Um, and the other thing is also people don't realise how big visual effects is. It's not just animation. Mm. It's not just about creating explosions. But, you know, we, we also employ people with um, backgrounds in computer science as well. They're fundamental to, to who we are. So there's a lot of support staff outside of that movie Magic that are employed at Rising Sun Pictures. We're talking about an initiative that will kick off uh, on the 10th. Uh, it's called JobX. It'll be held in Adelaide from the 10th uh, and 11th, so uh, uh, next week, and then it'll be heading off to Port Augusta and uh, Murray Bridge. We'll come back with uh, more details in just a moment. 
And it's 12 minutes away from 2 o'clock. Uh, we're currently talking about uh, JobX, which is uh, South Australia's largest career exhibition, which kicks off uh, this uh, Friday. It's here in Adelaide on the 10th and 11th, and it heads to Port, uh, Port Augusta on the 20th of November and Murray Bridge on the 23rd. And uh, 8,000 people have signed up thus far, and uh, it's going to be a great showcase of uh, what jobs are around the state, uh, what are, uh, jobs are available around the state, but also what's likely to happen in the future and of course that's uh, the direction we're all heading in we've already been talking today about uh, what uh, you know jobs that might not exist yet um, uh, that our kids will probably end up doing that are starting out now we're talking to scott oster from uh, the uh, project d- director with uh, job x uh, uh, anna hodge from uh, rising sun pictures who are also taking part and also our next guest is Anne mol uh, saini who's um well, you tell us your story. You're at the, the Adelaide University. Thank you. Uh, yes, so I'm a student at the Adelaide University. At the moment, I'm studying my honours degree in the field of reproduction. But apart from that, research does my de- um, get quite, quite complicated. So I'm a student ambassador with the Adelaide University itself. So I do. Um, I have a bit of volunteering position with the university itself. So as a part of my student ambassador, I go to different high schools, interact with um, year 11s and year 12 students and year 10s, guiding them what's... Um, what a uni transition could be from mm-hmm. high school to uni, what the future options could be, and the job market, the degrees pathways are quite changing dramatically, so one has to be on top of it. And plus, I guess, with globalisation, one has to be on the top and be aware of this uh, surroundings as well. You're a classic example, the, the fact that you're still studying. And, and uh, did you know exactly what you wanted to do when you were, say, 16? No, never. Mm. When I came into uni, I didn't even know I wanted to study that course. I just got into that accidentally. I've never heard about it. And I was th- I always thought during the first year, oh, that's not my cup of tea. You know, I'll change. But while I f- progressed into that degree, I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. And um, the opportunities came to my way or I became aware, I grasped onto it and it took it from there. So I think beca- being aware of your, uh, the surroundings and the opportunities mm. is definitely a good idea, especially in uni, because I think with the changing job market at the moment, it's not about what degree you got. It's all about the experiences and these um, other things you've done in the university. Mm. And is uh, that advice that you give to the students when you meet them, you know, in year 11 and 12, does that resonate with them or is it uh, more confusing for them? No, I think at the moment now, the year 11 and year 12 students are quite smart and they have started to realise the potential in it. And I think even in, when I talk to year 10 students, they're already searching their job up, uni options, even though they're going to come into uni four years down the track. Mm. So I think year 11, and year 12s in particularly have started to realize that and one thing I always convey the message is just do your best at high school and then come into uni and there are a lot of options over there where you can go and go on from there into unis because it's not like I think the dilemma at the moment is if you don't get into a dream course that's it you know job Mm. done but that's Mm. not the reality there are a lot of backup options there are a lot of pathways you can get into yeah, exactly. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, we were joking earlier about, I think uh, the average expectation is that you'll have 17 jobs over the mm. course of your, your career these days, whereas, you know, when, when I was growing up, it was, I think it was five. It's yeah. now up to 17, yeah. uh, which uh, says a lot, doesn't it? Mm. Um, uh, and uh, Anna, your, your organisation is a classic case of that, that mm. I can get in doing one thing, yep. uh, join the Rising Sun Pictures doing one thing, but I could end up in three years' time doing something completely different. Exactly, and I think it's about, um, again, doing your research, as you pointed out. Uh, students need to look at where they want to go, talk to their teachers, their career advisors, bring mum and dad along. I think JobX is a really good example of that. Um, and come and talk to us if you want to get into visual effects or you know whatever you want to get into. Um, find out what your options are. What are the entry-level options as well? You know, Coming in thinking, I'm going to work as a producer, that's great, but it won't be your first job mm. in visual effects per se. Mm. Um, and I think the main advice I would say to students is just work hard, believe in yourself, uh, don't be scared if you get knocked back. Get advice. Try and try again, and reapply. And I think persistence does pay off. Definitely. This is one question for all of you, and a question without notice. Do you think the schools sometimes put a little bit too much pressure on the kids? You know, in year eleven and twelve, mm. particularly. What are you going to do when you finish year twelve? I don't, still don't mm. know what I want to do when I finish year twelve. Um, there's a little bit too much pressure sometimes. Do you agree? I think sometimes there can be, um, but I mean, I'm a parent now with a child going into year 10, so um, I think it's important. And does your child know what 
they want to do? Yeah, she's known since she's been quite young. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it may change. It may. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm open to. I think she's aiming very high, and I'm, I support that. But mm. uh, uh, I think it's important to look at all options, really, and again, look at those we talked about transferable skills. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, what are the sorts? Well, of see, things? that's the point I'm making. Yeah. A lot sometimes the schools put pressure on you. Must go and yeah. do. You must do chemistry. You must do. You know, science or whatever. Mm. Um, and you close. You know, forget the other options. Yeah. Mm. That that uh, is. Era. I, think it, you, it, it, I think you keep your options open. We yeah. often have um, kids coming to us and talking about they've done some great work. You know, kids are really teaching themselves a lot of technology within schools now. And you look at their work on face value, and it's fantastic. Give them six months and a bit of good mentoring, they can they can you know take on the world. But uh, I think it is still important to keep your options open and ask lots of questions. Uh, finish year twelve, do the best that you can at school, so that at the end of year twelve you can choose wherever you want to go because it does change mm. and your life mm. does change too. I also yeah. think just. Just um, the way that we've structured um, and designed JobX yep. mm. is if students do have a, a, a sector in mind, mm. um, yep. then the way that the event will be delivered is in the five focus sectors. So they can go around and talk to all the employees in one area from each sector, um, learn about the variety of jobs that are available in, in sectors such as energy and mining or tourism, food and wine, and talk to dozens of employers in that one sector to work out what the diversity of jobs are and the skills and training required to actually work in, mm. into that workforce. What are the other three sectors? So we've got defence and shipbuilding, mm. uh, health and research, and IT and high tech. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it covers it all, doesn't it? That's mm. the whole gamut. Yeah, and, and Mole, you'd, you'd uh, what, what's your view of, of, of kids? You know, sort of closing off one one uh, gate by, by focusing on on another. See, that's the thing. And I always, when I interact with yeah, high school students, I'll tell them keep your options open. Don't just burden yourself with uh, tough subjects. Just bring down, brings down your ATAR and then restricts your uh, entry into uni. Have your options open. Do what you love. Don't come under the pressure of your parents that you have to do chemistry or you have to do biology. Do what you love. If, if you don't love a, love a particular subject, you're not going to enjoy it. And I think I came under the pressure of my parents and I, I did biology and chemistry. Like I enjoyed chemistry, but biology was quite tough for me at that time and I didn't really enjoy it. So I think enjoy what you do the most and while you're doing it yourself, enjoy yourself as well because you're going to miss that life. I can tell from my personal experience, I wish I could go back to my year 12 now and enjoy that life at the moment. So apart from being really career-focused and bringing those good etats, you have to balance with enjoying your year 12 as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm with you, 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 you know, yeah. 100%. Uh, you were on the Thank same you. page there, and well, that's for Thank sure. Um, the other thing too, of course, is does it necessarily have to uh, uh, involve university? Um, Absolutely not. It doesn't, does it? No. And we have a a number of exhibitors that are there um, with entry-level positions uh, that don't require any formal training exhibiting uh, as well, Um, particularly in the agricultural sector um, or positions such as um, Peregrine Corporation who own the -the on-the-run stores. uh, They're looking for casual staff. So Mm -hmm. um, certainly there is no need for specific tertiary education. Uh, There are a wide variety of jobs available. Mm -hmm. And you'd... uh... Anna, you, you, I mean, I, I doubt I could get into your organisation mm. without some sort of, uh, you know, formal qualification. Yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I shouldn't, uh, you know, I should wipe off your sector of the the, the jobs market because I don't have a degree. No, not necessarily. Look, we, we've actually, um, there are many ways into the industry. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we've had a lot of people coming in as career changers. Mm. Compared to, let's say, medicine, visual effects is, is a, a newish uh, industry and we've had a lot of the, the pioneers come in from other creative technical areas like architecture, interior design, um, computer science, even traditional science, you know, molecular biology sort of thing. Uh, so there's many ways in. Um, and I think just do your research, ask lots of questions. The education market is really competitive. I mean, we, we like the product that we have with the university because it's built exactly as we want it and we've had a lot of success with it. But, um, yeah, ask questions. I mean, JobX is the perfect opportunity for that. And um, do your research, you know, mm. a- apply mm. yourself, give yourself a day a week or an hour a week or whatever you've got to find a job and, you know, do the research to get there. Good advice, Scott. Uh, where is it and when? The Adelaide Convention Centre and the, on Friday and Saturday this week. Uh, for those looking to come along, uh, jump on the website, jobxex.sa.gov.au and uh, and register for your free ticket. Uh, but you must register, mustn't you? You must it's register. No, no good just turning up on the day? You can turn up on the day. Um, however, to get in quickly um, and to avoid the crowds, do jump yeah. online and pre-register. 
Okay, so that's job X, job EX, uh, .sa.gov.au. Uh, and after uh, the convention centre this Friday and Saturday, you'll be off to Port Augusta on the 20th of November and Murray Bridge on the 23rd of November. Thanks, Alan. Good luck with it. Uh, it sounds like uh, great uh, advice all round. Thank you. All the Thank best. Uh, see, see you there.